Hello and welcome to Spring Commander Borderlands Forever. Back to good old 1v1. This is a custom 1v1 from beginning of January, so it's kind of old. But Mozart recommended it to me. Said it was a good game, and let's see if it is. So. You have a cyber mirror matchup, Bloodier in the purple on the left, Mozart in the right, in the blue. First land, Bloodier's gonna make all the mixes with his ACU actually. It's not not the usual thing, Mozart making three mixes, so nobody making a P Gen before the Hydro. So Bloodier hasn't played in a while, so at least we can still see his games from when he was whoring Certus like a madman. Whole lot of P gens queued up and yeah, you usually don't want to do this because <laughs> they will damage each other when they die. So some T1 bombers get in here could be really painful for Mozart. Blood here going second air. Well. Simultaneous air and land. Same for Mozart, although he started making his land factory sooner, so he will have his first, his second land factory up a bit faster. Blood Ear will likely just make, yep, anti scout. There really is so many scouts though, it's, but uh. Hmm. It's quite mass heavy actually when you just when you make air scouts because they have a low build time, quite low power cost, but still a 40 mass, so you gotta be careful. They're expensive. Um looks like similar build orders, good eco balance, you really will be using all your power at the start of the game. You can see these trees are pretty good to grab early on. And of course you have all these tiny rocks to grab, so... Yeah, this is nice. Just pure NG spam. Well, one mantis in the scout and uh, then just a lot of NGs to grab as much reclaim as fast as possible and also then when you have the resource when you don't need to reclaim you can just grab a couple of these guys and throw down more factories it's probably what he'll do. You can also make some pigeons up here if you need the extra power, because that is a lot of build power in one spot already. Quite funny. This is really an, a really eco heavy start. So you can see three tanks and 26 engineers. Bearing in mind that engineers cost essentially the same as a tank. So you gotta say that that's a lot of that's a lot of NGs for the number of tanks. Bloodier similarly has like less than ten tanks, I would say. But he hasn't got so many engineers reclaiming here, so you can see he is actually behind. 1k more reclaim, that's huge, and that's all in reclaim. 1k more mass total, almost. And uh because of reclaim from from Mozart's NGs over here basically. But he is slower to get the mexes, which is uh, not great, but it's not a huge difference. So I think what will happen is well it looks like we're just gonna go towards T3 rush probably. That's what Bloodier always did on this map. If you watch Plutter's games on Sirtis, you'll see that he actually does the same thing every single time. So he'll just he'll get a couple of support factories at T2, and while he's getting those support factories, he'll be making a T3 HQ. See now, just 6.15, and we're going towards mid. Mozart, however, playing a bit differently. He's gone to the far side, and that's a good PD from Bloodair. Should slow Mozart down if he actually does want to in this direction. 
down here. Good attack from Bladir, getting some free kills basically. See this man just, just gets to fire a very short period of time and then gets wiped out. So that's quite quite good kills here. No Medusa for Mozart. He only sees the PD now. You can see the AC is actually pretty good at hitting PD, but even though it is, it's, you're still going to take a lot of damage. She just lost about 2.5k there, just over that. Cybern have good regen though. On T1, it looks like Mozart has no interest in trying to get mid. He has no tanks here. And Bloodier is just going to get it for free. Bloodier could even just take it with engineers and Medusa and send his ACU elsewhere, perhaps in this direction. Mozart doing well on these sides. He's killed the engineer and the mexes here and Bloodier has not got this either. If we look at T2 mexes then you can see there's just the one at the minute. Two more upgrading. And for Blood Deer, just got one upgrading now as he is grabbing that mass and using it very well actually. We have a couple of engineers queued and then I think we'll see probably T3. But he does have to be worried about this ACU. There's not a huge amount to kill in this area but it's still dangerous. Blood Deer just grabbing all the mass in mid. How much does a mass storage hold exactly? 500 mass, yeah, so it's useful even when you're getting this to just have two storages, three storages, just to make sure you don't overflow any of that. It's not a, not a bad idea to just have some early storages. Hmm, I'm interested now what exactly Mozart can do with this ACU. He has gotten a few mexes and certainly secured this area by holding here. And oh, I'm on minus one rather than zero. Looks like Mozart is suiciding his air somewhat. And Blood here a bit slow about starting that T2P gen and the TMDs. Blood here left some, left some reclaim in, it, in mid. The PDs, the T2 flak is quite good to grab as well. If we look at Mozart, I don't see T2 land. Oh, I do, sorry. I, do I see HQs? Or support vectors, I should say. No. Just have a lot of T1 spam around still. Here's a drop. Good drop. You can do good damage here. It looks like you can kill several mexes. And... Ah, he has a fairy point, nice, so he can just send any number of units he wants to assist this fairy point and just drop across. Blood Deer hasn't actually realized. Oh, there's a radar here, which would be great to kill. But Blood Deer has the score lead. He does have, he only has a slight reclaim lead, however, which is interesting because he did get about 3k mass from the wreck in mid. Mozart got none of that. No upgrade or anything from Moltar. If he had T2, you see there's there's a lot of mexes that could die. Well, not these ones, but um, could be aiming for the power ACU or not ACU HQ power T2 mexes. There's no TMD here yet that I can see. No, none. So. Neither player making huge use of their ACU, in fact. Now we see Bloodier getting gun, which will help him deal with the T1 spam. And also, perhaps any T3 units will be more likely to run away. We see rhinos, and yeah, still no T2 support factory, so where is. 
Mozart gonna send his mass. It looks like he's gonna put it into air because he has a whole bunch of air factories. PD is defended by a shit ton of Medusa. And a whole bunch of Mozart's just got wiped in one volley. Over here we have bombers going to work on this T1 land. They're gonna do a good job. No T1 mobile A mixed in. So how does Mozart make the air work for him? Because T3 is halfway done. There's not not a huge stall. He's trying to tide himself over with reclaim. And there's even rhinos out, so... Let's see... I don't see a T2 air HQ. See some Medusa stunning indies. <laughs> yeah, Medusa on this hill here would be much better rather than fighting down here if he fought over here. Only problem with Medusa is that they're gonna kill a lot of reclaim. Here we have the air fight. So Mozart looks like he has it. There's no anti air to help out. Uh, just this one here, but it looks like Mozart wins air. It's pretty close though, but I'm sure he has more. Uh, more production anyway. Even if it is a close win or loss, I think he can eventually take the win. So, some reclaim left, but I guess that's okay. Mozart not making much progress here. It looks like he really has just similar units to what's here. Perhaps a few more now that he has more tanks on the way. A lot of these are Medusa though, so if he gets the Mantis in there, does, it's just a minimum of Micro to make sure he uh, doesn't just die to Medusa. Then he, he can kill this army, I believe. And he's going to do some good raiding. Meanwhile, out of these factories, he hasn't gone for T2 air. He's going for T1 bombers. So we'll see how well that works for him. Here, just need a bit more micro. Oh, they're all so low. They've all been hit by shells, I believe. But still, he gets this rating done. Could even take these mixes with an engineer. No reason not to. Both players scouting quite heavily now. Blood Ear was scouting for most of the game. <laughs> Mozart, I guess, he kind of knew what was coming, so... No need necessarily to scout the base, you can always tell what Blood Ear is doing. On this map especially. He will always go T2 air, and he'll always rush T3 land. And he'll always make a few rhinos. So Flax will just destroy these bombers, they're not going to do a whole lot. Over here we have perhaps an upgrading mechs, considering these were... T both T2, but Loyalists should save the should save the T2 Mexes that are there. Shield going up, that's always good. If you see T2 air from Cybern, shield your PGens. Just you just have to really. There's no reason not to. A shield is very cheap and basically triples your PGen HP. 160 mass and minus 100 upkeep. Gotta do it if you're versus Cybern. There's no reason not to. Not not worth saving 100 or 200 mass and 100 power to risk losing your pigeons. And it looks actually like Bloodier's gonna win air now. And as he's doing it, we see loyalists on their way. It looks like they're gonna be dropped. Or in Mozart's making RAS right now though. And we've got anti airs, but it doesn't look like they're gonna be able to kill this T2. 
Oh, where is it going? Oh, perhaps he saw the ACU and decided he doesn't want to get overcharged, so he's going to drop over here instead. And the drop does come off. But three loyalists are already there. And that, that's really the problem with making loyalists to drop is that dropping two bricks is far more dangerous and far harder to deal with than dropping two uh, loyalists, which are quite weak in comparison. Still have a lot of T1 spam coming out here. Looks like actually there's room to room to push, but uh Ledger's already gotten a lot of reclaim here anyway. This attack is not not great. Just kind of suiciding a little bit. Bloodier does a nice drop here with his ACU to send in a, send that gun come to work and just clean up any any T1 land that's here. Tidy up the mess. Still don't have any T2 air or anything from Mozart. And Corsairs being built. We have two already. And more on the way. Bit of a reclaim field here to to suck up and Mozart does make this push. PD should be dead pretty quick. Vladir just scouting to make sure he knows what is there. Let's see how this RAS is doing. We're at like halfway. And we have a T3 engineer out as well. So I think Cyber and RAS is still pretty good for power even after the nerf. 2700. So I think we might see some T3 air. And perhaps a T3 P gen with it. Corsairs moving in. Are they? Hmm, they are actually attacking the. This land army mm, would be much better to have gunships to do that rather than Corsair, in my opinion, but I don't think it really matters when he has this many loyalists to defend it anyway. Should be cleaned up. All taste. More loyalists moving through mid now. Significant army. Yeah, we're gonna need to see some flak with with all these corsairs. It's very dangerous for for Mozart. He's paused his ras. While he makes T3 pigeon, here is the air factory, which will likely go to T2 and then T3. I would love to see some TML because there's a lot of unshielded TMD around that could easily be easily be killed and uh, might be a bit more efficient it's slightly dangerous for a blue deer with this many boyas but uh, he's fine with so many corsairs around helping him and also his loyal army retreats from the right hand side to clean up but that's still 3 T2 mechs has gone down Not ideal. But now we can see Mozart has very few units. He had stopped production in his land HQ for a long time. He only has three loyalists. So perhaps a bad move to send his loyalists in and lose them. But it doesn't really seem like we have many units for Blood Deer either, actually. It's quite interesting. But he does have 11 Corsairs, and they've only really been used for defense. He hasn't done any attacking whatsoever with them. He hasn't tried to kill Pigeons, or maybe kill some shit over here. Now it looks like he wants to go win air and then get those Corsairs into battle. Oh, he's attacking the wrong target. This unshielded T3 Pigeon has to be the first target, really. Rather than the, the shielded ones.
Now a flak appears just in time and actually Bloodir changes his target just in time. Flak is doing good damage but T3 PJ goes down, can be rebuilt quite easily. Motor are micring quite heavily. This T2 P gen is still alive. Oh! There it goes. And there's still maybe three Corsairs alive. Two here. Two more here. This P gen won't die. Hmm. And there it goes now. So. Those Corsairs did a lot. A lot of damage. We lost two T2 P gens, a shield, and uh, a T3 P gen. And this is really stalling, uh, really stalling Mozart's plans. He does have Ras, that's great for him, but he wants to make some T3 air, and he's going to need these P gens to, to do it. I'm sure, he'll stall heavily. Yeah, he has to make a, has to make this T3 P gen first, maybe even. Make another one. So great attack from Bladir. He had to he had to use those corsairs. If he if he had waited, then it could have been extremely bad for him. Did also try to drop here, I believe. Uh, with brick with the bricks, one brick, two bricks maybe. But it didn't work. PD's down to. Uh, Start shooting shit as soon as it lands. Over here we have a bit of an idle T3 army. Looks like cleaned up all the T1 and T2 that was here. But he's not moving in. There's damage to be done if he if he moves quick. We have a strat complete now. And we have a T3 spy plane. The deer obviously knows there's a uh, T3 air HQ given that he it's flying lots of Corsairs over it, trying to kill them. So what's the reaction? Where's the anti-air? Do we see... Sams? Is that it? Yeah, okay, here's a Sam. Two Sams queued for this guy. There's another T3 engineer, I'm sure he's... gonna be given the order to queue up some Sams. It looks like, again, more air fights, but... There goes the strap bomber. There's no shields on these T2P gens at all. Bladir hasn't built a single shield. And that is huge. A huge error. And also no no Sam in the main base, although yes. This one will be complete, but there's there's no Sam and there's no uh no T3 mobile anti air. So although he does actually kill a strat, did he did he actually kill one? Looks like he did, but now we have strap bomber targeting T1 P gens. The T3 army moves in but now there's enough loyalists in place to shut that down. ASF are out now. Not the greatest target. But this looks very bad now. We have a SAM up here. We still don't have a Sam here because there's just not enough power. 800 power income. And another bomb drops. Oh, it drops on the T3 land HQ. But you can see there's no T3 mobile anti air. And just one Sam in the expansion. Mmm. And no shields. It looks like. Bloodier is going to get the strap on back to the Stone Age. And now with 10 ASF out, I don't think there's any hope of killing these strats. 
with uh, well all the inties are surely cleaned up by now and there's not going to be any more considering his power income really and again another pgen dies this one will die as well as there's nothing to save it blacks can do some damage but really this is this is not going to end well for blood deer <laughs> this bgen survives somehow and also we have cheats free gunships you're gonna need a whole lot of flak and really Cybern has a tough time versus versus T3 gunships because they have no shields to uh, allow their flak to actually get some damage in before getting killed by the gunships so T3 gunships are a great choice so without tons of flak he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to stop those gunships the flying bricks from giving out tons of damage and we do see that he succeeded he got in here with some bricks and still doing damage but it's just not nowhere near the significance of the damage these strap bombers have done another t2p gen dead this one remains alive somehow all the bombs have dropped all around it and I think I think this, uh, this T3R won the game. The gunships can probably just search out the ACU and kill him, I would say. Is the strap armor just. casually goes to work. Only question is how to end the game. Sam getting killed by these gunships. Black moves in, shouldn't even matter really. Let's see. You need so much flak when you don't have shields for them. GG, well played from Bulldeer. Yeah. Well played, Mozart. I think uh, the PDs were actually pretty good. Even if he doesn't drop into the PDs, they st they will still deny him dropping in any way because, well, you can drop into the middle of them, but maybe maybe you lose a brick that way. And we actually had a spider coming up, but uh, yeah, the T3 air we didn't see shields, and we didn't see Sam's or T3 mobile A, and the strats were already dropping, and that's it's too late to make it then, really. But well timed Corsair attack to kill the T3 P gen. And really, that should have bought Bloody enough time to, to react in some way. But uh, he was just a bit slow on that. So. so he died to the T3 air, which is. Well, it's very strong. And you have to say, Mozart did put a lot into it. He had a lot of mass. He made RAS. In quite an exposed position, he probably could have been sniped here quite easily. Uh, if he had been spotted uh, upgrading, maybe those Corsairs could have done him in. But, uh, yeah. Well played, both players. And actually, interesting that Mozart was fine even without this uh, huge chunk of mid mass. He got advantages in other areas. Uh, while ignoring that which is an uh, interesting strategy so well played GG